my immense joy to see all of you here from various parts of this world. When your heart is so full, the words are too poor to carry the intensity. I wish you could understand that intensity through your heart. It's all being arranged, I think, by the Divine that we should meet here, all of us, in such a wonderful surrounding in the nature, that something great should happen to all of us, that we should achieve really something great this time. Now as the time is short, I will tell you first of all a few things about meditation now. Then we'll have two more talks, I hope so. Meditation is a very general word. It is not a word that explains all the three steps one has to take for meditating. But in Sanskrit language they have very clearly said how you have to move in your meditation. First is called as dhyana and second is called as dharna and the third is called as samadhi. Luckily, Sahaja Yoga is a such a thing that you get everything in a bundle. <laughs> you avoided everything else and you got the samadhi part. That's the beauty of it. First is the dhyana. First, when you have seeking, you put your attention towards the object of your worship, that's called as dhyāna. Dharana is the one in which you put all your effort, concentrate all your effort. But this is all drama for people who are not realized. For them it's just a sort of an acting that they do. But for a realized soul it is a reality. So the first, the dhyāna you have to do, some do it of the form, another of the formless. But you are so fortunate that the formless has become a form for you. No problem, you don't have to go from form to formless or formless to form, it's all there, <laughs> in a bundle. So you concentrate or think of some deity or some point for nirakar, for, for the formless, or of nirakar itself. It's also a mental projection as long as you are not a realized soul. But once you are realized, you have to just think of dhyāna, whom you are going to concentrate or you can say on meditate. But once you start meditating on a person, your attention starts moving. That is also possible after realization. Though it's in a bundle, but some people have it part of it, part of it like that. So when you meditate, 
steal your attention can get disturbed every moment. It can happen depending on the intensity of your concentration. So there are some Sahajogis I have seen, they are cooking, <coughs> and there is another one who is meditating. The meditating one will say, Oh, I can smell it, it is burning. So the, there is no dharana. Dhar means a flow, continuous flow. So there is no dharana. Dhyana is there, but not dharana. The second part of it is very important, that you have to put your attention continuously onto your deity. Then you develop a state which is called as dharana, in which your attention becomes one with the Deity. But when these mature, the third stage of samādhi comes in. Now for people who think that without realization they can do it, I think they are absolutely mistaken. But after realization also, when the dharana is established, you have to get to the position where you become samādhi. Now what is that state? When that state comes into your mind, then whatever you do, the deity that you worship you see that deity in your work. Whatever you see, you see the deity giving you the show. You can put it like that. Whatever you hear, you find the deity telling you the truth. Whatever you read, you find that what the deity would tell you. So, in that state, whatever you do with your eyes, nose and all these organs, all that becomes a kind of a manifestation of the Deity whom you worship, automatically. You don't have to think, now I must concentrate, all right. I will not have these thoughts, I have to now think about this. It becomes automatically that. You read a book, in that book immediately you find what is good for Sahaja Yoga. If there is a book which is anti-God, you discard it. Just call Marina then. But if you have a problem, you see that it must be for some lesson to Me, that it is to teach Me some experience. It is the manifestation of the Deity itself. For example, a lady feels she is going to have an abortion, take a position. So one person who is not yet in samādhi avastha or condition will say, Oh God, I am such a sahajogi, I have done so much for Mother, I went all the way to Pulbarao thing, and despite that, see, this is the problem. But another would say that, All right, let Me try, I will go and tell Mother, on the photograph or maybe telephone something. And he will find, to his surprise, that is all done. It's perfectly all right. This is only possible if you are a realized soul, otherwise not possible. So the <coughs> state that is awakened within you is called is a new state of mind. In Sanskrit language it has a very name, beautiful name is Ruttambara Pradnya, which is a very difficult name. Ruttambara Pradnya. Ruttambara means the whole Ruttambara is the name of the nature. And that the whole nature, 
one feels is enlightened. I'll give an example. When a child is to be born, the mother starts lactating automatically. The nature itself works out for the birth of the child. In the same way, when this Rutambhara Pradnya start expressing itself only for Sahaja Yogis, nobody else, you are amazed how things work out suddenly. Now the time is very short, but I'll give you an example. I came to Brighton and Jason said, Mother, let's have Guru Puja in Brighton. I said, All right, have it. But you find out the place. So he went to the university, said, The university people will help, but it's rather small. And I said, But ask them. But no, it's booked on Guru Puja. Then I said, Then what can you do? He said, Then what to do, Mother? I said, You try somewhere else just now. Telephone to somebody else. So went through Yellow Pages, I don't know what, and he telephoned and they said, We have a place, a beautiful place. And you come along <laughs> and have lunch with us. And just he came there, went there, he had a very nice lunch, they were very happy, they were to accommodate everyone, they were very nice, and he was amazed how everything has worked out so well. So the Rutambara Pradnya has started working in your favor. You all tell me, this is a miracle that has happened, Mother, and we don't know how it has happened. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, you were doing something with the cement, and the Italian boy said that we'll make, need two bags of cement. I said, you carry on, it won't finish. Even before I was leaving, they were carrying on, still not finished. Now cement of all the things, imagine. <laughs> so this special thing is your own state where you are feeling the oneness with the nature and the nature is feeling oneness with you. So the Divine itself is expressing through nature, through various happenings, through uh, various incidents, the love, the protection, the attention that the Divine is giving. And the, there's no end to it. It just happens. And people don't know how it happens. But that is what is the state of samadhi. But there could be people, if I tell them, will you do this? Oh no, Mother, the shop will be closed. Oh, they won't do it. That's not all right. They go on like that. And there are people who say, no, let's, let's see if Mother has said maybe. I'll give you another simple example. Very simple, absolutely gross, but it's there. One day Mr. Srivastava, he takes one type of tea, very English, <laughs> and he wouldn't <coughs> like other tea, you see, so he told me, Oh God, we are finished with the tea and what to do tomorrow morning. I said, It's all right, let us go to the tea shop. So he said, It is eight o'clock in the e night, and what do you mean? They'll all laugh at us, there's no shop at eight o'clock open that tea center. I said, let's go, what's the harm? I'm just saying, let's go. But he said, what absurd things you are saying? I said, all right, absurd, whatever, let's go. <laughs> so I, he wouldn't listen, so I told the all right, let's drive down. We went there. And the lights were on. We said, ah, how is it? The lights are on. <laughs> so we walked in, you see, very peevishly. And they all were there standing, oh, we've been waiting for you such a long time, you know, and you are the last to come, just imagine. So I asked my husband, he said, I forgot we had a reception here. <laughs> and they said, you are the last to arrive. And they said, all right, doesn't matter, but you'll have your presents. So they gave us two tins each of tea. <laughs> I mean, there are thousand and one examples like that. Do they like somewhere trying to push the bed? No, the three of them were trying. It would not push. I said, all right, I'll push it. I just put my nabi there. Just I didn't push anything. It just pushed. <laughs> because of Rutambhara Pradnya, 
but this is not chamatkar or anything. It exists in the divine, the capacity to manifest its love, to show that you are the saints, you are the chosen ones of God. But you accept that situation first. But if you behave like all other normal people, oh God, the shops are closed and that man is so difficult and I don't think it will happen. Never happen. But you must know you are saints, chosen and given birth by Me, the form and the formless. So this prajna is going to manifest, is, is manifesting every moment. Be prepared, be happy, welcome it and accept that you are there. The level is different. Is done? Right? Huh? Five minutes more. I shouldn't do anything that side. <laughs> All right. Now the time has come for Sir Yoga to change its level. We have to change. We have to go higher. The level has to come up. But Sahaja Yoga is such a cosmopolitan thing that we have got the worst boots to the highest on the same plate. Now some of them are round ones, which are the ego-oriented ones who roll all the time. They don't know how to raise the plate. If you raise the plate, they'll roll down. So you are frightened, you have to hold them. And there are some who are squares, and the squares ones are carrying other squares on their heads, like boots. So if you raise them, they may all topple down, or may the boots might fall off, God knows. But there are third type who are prisms, more like pyramids, who are nicely settled down. Whatever level you raise them, they are stuck. So those who are at the periphery are a problem, definitely, for Me, because in My compassion I cannot throw them out. And we have to help them to come out by really now telling them that they have to rise. How long are we to wait for them? Everyone has to see that the peripheral people are brought in properly so that they don't go out of Sahaja Yoga. <coughs> Compassion is all right, but not at the cost of keeping the level of Sahaja Yoga lower, never. We have to raise the le level of people who are well settled in Sahaja Yoga. So everybody must try to settle down and come up to minimum standards at least. Otherwise, I am sorry, many will be sieved out. <laughs>